This is a podcast by The Business Times. Welcome to Wealth with BT. Learn to protect and grow your wealth in this monthly podcast series by The Business Times, hosted by BT Wealth Editor Genevieve Kwa. This episode is brought to you by Pictay Wealth Management. Today, we're going to talk about philanthropy or a commitment to giving to help solve issues or problems that humanity grapples with. In preparing for this episode, I looked up the meaning of philanthropy. With a simple Google search, you'll find some common phrases like a desire to promote the welfare of others or love of humanity and also an act of goodwill. There is a marked difference, however, between charity, which may be a one-off act of giving, and philanthropy which can be much more systematic and long-term. While there is always a need for charitable giving, philanthropy has the potential to make real and impactful change for a country and society. In Singapore, philanthropists are major supporters of social causes like education and aging. Think of the Lien Foundation and the Lee Foundation. The Lee Foundation has endowed schools here for decades, and the Lien Foundation seeks to improve the lives of seniors and special needs children. Philanthropy is almost always associated with very wealthy families. If you have less wealth, but many good intentions, can you also engage in philanthropy? We'll get to that in a few minutes. Of course, philanthropy is very much a personal choice and commitment for families. Hence, families play an important role in setting out their philanthropic objectives and charting their roadmap. In this podcast, we'll go into a few points. One, I'll look into why philanthropic capital is increasingly important for the world. Two, we'll examine the ways in which philanthropy is evolving and how the lines between philanthropy and business or investment are blurring. And three, I'll look into the structure or platform for giving. How do you decide on the structure that's best for you and can accommodate multi-generational giving? Giving is a way for an individual or donor to help make a better society, maybe to alleviate poverty, for example, or empower people by education. In recent years, however, philanthropy has evolved from just simply giving a grant or money towards a more systematic giving, not just of money, but also of non-financial support to create a network for communities which may involve other donors and even governments. I imagine that the dream and ambition of many philanthropists is to make an impact in the world. That is, to spark or catalyze real change. The reality is that since COVID-19 hit in 2020, the world's needs and problems have only gotten bigger and deeper. At the outset, COVID was a health emergency. But related measures like travel and movement restrictions have caused economic recessions and greater poverty and inequality, especially for countries which are already poor in the first place. Now the threat of persistent inflation may make poverty and inequality even more entrenched. The world's many needs are listed in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. There are 17 goals and a dire need for capital to fund these goals. For Asia, the funding gap to achieve the SDGs is estimated at about 1.5 trillion US dollars a year from 2016 to 2030, if the SDGs are to be achieved by 2030. But government coffers are strapped because of the pandemic and other economic pressures like inflation. Governments are not able to finance these goals by themselves. Businesses can, of course, step in to support SDGs as part of their CSR, or Corporate Social Responsibility. That is a good thing. More businesses are embracing the goal of a triple bottom line, which is a philosophy of supporting profit, people, and the planet. But things are not moving quickly enough. Enter the philanthropists who are able to commit capital that is patient, long-term, and not targeted at generating a market return. Asia is fertile ground for philanthropy because wealth is growing at a very rapid pace despite the pandemic. But giving among Asia-Pacific families lags the West. According to a study cited by the AVPN, which is the Asian Venture Philanthropy Network, the ultra-wealthy in Asia contributed around 12% of philanthropic giving worldwide. 
despite owning a third of the world's wealth. But this is changing, particularly as more family offices establish a presence in Singapore. As of 2020, it's estimated that the number of family offices here has doubled to around 400. You can be sure that in addition to investing, family offices will serve as a conduit for philanthropy in Asia. Singapore also has ambitions to become the philanthropic hub for the Asia Pacific. We have with us Anthony Gao, Big Tay Wealth Management Head of Philanthropy Services Asia, to give us insights into the reasons why the interest in philanthropy among Asian families is growing. Anthony, what are you seeing in terms of the level of interest and motivations among Asian families? The world has been faced with the COVID crisis, and philanthropy has shown its tremendous value in tackling the global challenges. For example, in developing the COVID vaccines, the Gates Foundation and other charitable organizations they co-founded Sepi, Gavi, different global platforms to develop and deploy the COVID vaccines to make sure that the world come out of COVID crisis as soon as possible. And philanthropic organizations also played a very important role to support frontline health workers, such as Tanoro Foundation in Indonesia. And then philanthropic organizations they have mobilized resource to help people whose lives have been affected and impacted by COVID. So going forward, we definitely believe that philanthropy will receive even more focus during the COVID. We can see that. Because COVID crisis has hit different population groups unequally, so after COVID, there is a worsening inequity among the population, with the poor having been hit more heavily. And climate crisis has also become even more urgent, with the latest findings from IPCC showing that the world needs more decisive action to stop climate change. I think more importantly, it is increasingly clear that the market force alone cannot function well enough to address the social and environment challenges. The government alone does not have the resource to address all of the challenges. So there are more encouragement from the government and the society for philanthropic organizations to play a bigger role. And among Asian families, that's especially true because many families are entering an intergeneration transition, and philanthropy has become a very important topic for families to engage their family members to build a legacy. It has become an increasingly social norm for wealthy families in the region to be more focused on impact besides, you know, succeeding in their business. Asian governments, like governments around the world, are introducing policies to encourage more philanthropic giving to help address social and environment challenges. Singapore has been a great example that the government has adopted several policy measures to encourage the set of philanthropic structure to encourage more charitable giving. So we're very confident that this trend will continue. This episode is brought to you by Pictay Wealth Management. Find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or via the Google Voice Assistant and Amazon Alexa-enabled devices. And now back to our podcast episode. Now let's look into the ways that philanthropy itself is evolving. We can get a good picture of the trends by looking at the U.S., which is a mature market for wealth and philanthropy. In the U.S., it's estimated that private giving increased almost fourfold over a space of 13 years. From 1995 to 2018, many philanthropists have adopted a bedrock principle of what is called strategic philanthropy, where families and corporations borrow approaches from venture capital. The driving force behind this is the desire to achieve lasting impact and to have greater governance and accountability for how funds are deployed. So here is the crux: today in the philanthropic world, it's generally not enough to just donate money. Just as important is to need to build capacity, which includes building leadership and talent, and laying the groundwork for collaboration. What philanthropists want is to make a real impact, not just for today's issues, but to benefit future generations. Hence, philanthropists today may borrow some terminology and approaches from the investment world. You are likely to see a greater focus on measurement and metrics and impact itself, for example. And you'll see the emergence of alternatives to foundations like donor advised funds. Anthony, the lines between philanthropy and business or investment are blurring. What do you see as the most significant trends in philanthropic giving, which are likely to be most influential in Asia? 
three major trends. First, philanthropy and investment. There are more and more joining forces. Philanthropy right now is featured in the continuum of different ways of deploying capital, ranging from none as ESG investing, ESG integrated investing. ESG binding investing, impact investing, and then we enter the territory of philanthropy, in which there are social finance or venture philanthropy, catalytic philanthropy, philanthropy and charitable giving. So within social finance, venture philanthropy, there are increasing discussions and dialogues regarding the concept called blended finance. That different types of capital, philanthropic capital, public finance, commercial investments, they are blended to address the social and environment challenges. The benefit of blending is that it leverages the character of philanthropic capital, their unique character in which it is more risk tolerant, it is more flexible when deployed. So philanthropic capital, when blended, can not only drive impact by itself, it can even leverage more resources from the public sector, from the private sector, to maximize the impact. And at the same time, we're also seeing that there's more purposeful effort among the philanthropic organizations to align their investment of philanthropic capital with their missions. The second trend, we're seeing more and more collaborative giving because one philanthropic organization alone only has the scale, has the the resource to address a specific issue, specific projects. But the challenges we're seeing in the region needs collaboration. I believe is a very effective way to reach scale, so that philanthropy can be more efficient. And the third trend is the adoption of a new philanthropic structure called donor advice fund. And、right now, Singapore has been leading it in Asia. Community Foundation of Singapore is a very prominent example. There is one more aspect, Anthony, which is the structure for giving. Donor advice funds actually is an example of a structure. How important is it that families give a lot of thought to their structure for philanthropy, and what aspects deserve the most attention? It's true that not every philanthropist decides to set up their own structure. One prominent example is Mackenzie Scott, the world's leading female philanthropist. She has given away over 10 billion U.S. dollars without a dedicated philanthropic structure. Meanwhile, most of the leading philanthropists, including Asia, have chosen to establish their own structures. Some have even set up multiple different vehicles for different purposes and in different jurisdictions. In Asia, structured philanthropy is still a relatively new phenomenon. Even though some charities they have a very long history in the region, over 75% of the philanthropic foundations in the region were established in the past two decades. Having philanthropic structure offers some clear benefits. I would call the philanthropic structure as the face, the body, and the legs of your philanthropy. It is the face because the philanthropic structure can help build and strengthen the legacy of your giving. A foundation that carries the family's name associates the impact it creates with the family's value, and the family's legacy can live on even when the founder passes or the family no longer plays an active role. And it is the body because the philanthropic structure can allow philanthropists to decide or to conduct the type of philanthropy that they prefer, such as to hire a professional team of experts to help them execute their philanthropic programs. Or serve as a platform to conduct private and public fundraising, depending on local regulations. It is also the legs because the philanthropic structure can help sustain the long-term operation of their philanthropic work. It can be an effective platform to manage and invest the philanthropic capital, so that the assets they have donated can last and even grow to support increased giving over time. In most countries, you can either set up a foundation. Which is more public, or trust, charitable trust, which is more private. Within foundations, there are also different options, such as public charities, which can allow you to raise funding publicly, or a private foundation, which cannot. And donor advice fund is a new option in many countries. Selecting the location of your structure is also very important. It is critical to understand the requirement for registration, such as how long it will take to register and how much it will cost. And it is also important to understand the requirement for governance, such as rules regarding the board, the reporting obligations, and also the limits for the philanthropic activities are a critical factor. Whether any kinds of charitable work will be regarded as charitable purposes, you know, what is the limits for the scopes, or any restrictions for cross-border giving, 
And lastly, the rules about the financial of the philanthropic structure, such as whether there is a minimum requirement of annual payout or what kind of investment is allowed for the endowment. We just heard from Anthony on the reasons and ways Asian families can approach and think about philanthropy. But philanthropy really isn't only for the very wealthy. Even if you don't have millions of dollars to spare, you can participate via a donor advice fund with the Community Foundation of Singapore, for example. This gives you a pooled mechanism so that you can benefit with economies of scale, especially for items like administration and legal costs. And you can decide how much to give and fulfill your pledge over time. That's it for now. We hope we've managed to get you thinking about giving to causes that you may be passionate about. Until the next episode, thank you for listening to Wealth with BT. This episode is brought to you by Pictay Wealth Management. That was a podcast by The Business Times. Send your feedback to podcast at sph.com.sg. Find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or via the Google Voice Assistant and Amazon Alexa-enabled devices. For more podcasts by The Straits Times, The Business Times, and Money FM 89.3, you can also download the audio by SPH app. That's A-W-E-D-I-O. This podcast is meant to provide general information only. SPH Media accepts no liability for loss arising from any reliance on the podcast or use of third parties' products and services. Please consult professional advisors for independent advice.